we are back and uh, this video is about my biggest pet peeve in martial arts and the only thing I hate more is Eli over here. I love you too. I fell for it. <laughs> anyway, uh, so I just saw this video that popped up on Facebook and I got in a flame war with people because the guy in the video comes out, he's holding a knife like this and he's like, if you see someone holding a blade like this, run. Meaning this is the most effective way to hold a blade. Now, what I'm doing here is the blade is in my rear, rear hand, rear leg, with a reverse ice pick grip, and I'm hugging my arm. There are so many things wrong with this. Now, martial arts in general has a lot of people who are experts who are not really experts. I don't know anything about this dude, so I'm not gonna bash him, but I'm gonna bash the general mentality a lot of people have toward knife fighting. What happens with knife fighting is people want to claim they're experts in it. They watch a couple of videos on YouTube, they go take some Kav Maga classes, and then they know what they're talking about. I'll give you a little bit of a background about my Filipino martial arts experience. My martial arts experience, including Filipino martial arts. I trained for, since I'm 14 years old, under Kakoi Cañete's grandson, who is the founder of Dose Paris, Chris Bautista. Uh, and he trained the Filipino military. He was five-time world champion in stick fighting in the Philippines. I am a fifth degree black belt under him. I also trained with Tommy Daitang in Illustrissimo, which is a very bladed system. So if you know anything about Filipino martial arts, both of those, they are both bladed systems. They both deal with the knife tremendously or swords, uh, any type of bladed weapon and impact weapons. I've also just outside of that done Silat, which uses blades as well. And I grew up doing Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and Muay Thai. So I've, I'm a black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I've been doing it 24 years. And I've been doing Muay Thai for, I've always just been a, a huge Muay Thai fanatic. I think it's a great system. So those are like my core systems. Um, but as it pertains to the blade, I also have a lot of family in the Middle East and Israel, ranging from Sayeret to Matkal, everyone's in the military, to Golanim. And knives are a huge part there too, because that is the number one thing you're actually attacked with in Israel. There's a lot of knife attacks due to terrorism. So it's a huge part of something that I'm passionate about. Now, I want to discuss the way to properly hold a knife. By the way, here's the intro video. Pow, pow, inside, inside fighting, yeah. Dangerous, dangerous martial arts. Pow, pow, ooh, ah. We're back. I want to discuss how to properly hold the blade. Now, there's going to be varying opinions about this, but you have to be able to back up why you hold the blade as you do. Number one, I'm just gonna cut this off right away. I hate when people do this with a blade as if it's the proper way to hold an ice pick. I cannot stab you like this. I cannot do anything like this, nor am I adding any more protection to my forearm here. In fact, one of the best things about an ice pick grip is the slight separation because I can use it to grip. I can use it as my disarming tool, right? So if I do this, there's no way I can grip his arm and it's also harder for me to disarm as opposed to pushing. So a real traditional ice pick grip that is effective will give you range. Because I, and I, by the way, I can't even stab him here. I would stab him with the blade extended. So what I want to do when I have an ice pick grip just to begin is keep some distance between my forearm until I feel like something might be sneaking in there. Now I might get tight. Even then I'm driving the knife away as I do that. I'm driving. You don't have the door. Hold yeah. it. So I'm driving the blade. So that's irrelevant, that's not the point. <clears throat> the point is, how do we want to hold the blade and why? So here are just some of the options in terms of how we can hold the blade. We can take the blade into our front leg with our lead hand, right? So here it's my lead hand, and I'm in an open position. This would be closed, this would be open. Okay, so I'm in an open position lead traditional grip. That's what that looks like. I can do the same thing in a reverse grip. And I can do the same thing in a closed position or in a closed position. Notice, and this would be the biggest sign that someone doesn't know what they're, they're talking about. If they ever tell you a closed position should have the empty hand in front of the, the knife hand. The knife hand will always protect the empty hand because this hand cannot do as much as the blade can. Okay, so those are my lead positions. Open, closed, open, closed. Now I can put it into my rear and I can fight open, closed, open, closed. Now we're gonna look, each one of those positions has value at certain range and certain, certain situations. 
and you'll end up in those positions as you're knife fighting. Meaning if he came to stab me and, and I'm over here, I'm gonna end up in a slightly closed position sometimes. I might just have the blade up here, I'm in a closed position, right? So now I'm gonna stab, sorry, did that hurt? Good. Now I can go for my disarm or whatever that is, but the knife is gonna keep moving here. So I'm gonna use the blade to keep controlling. So knife fighting involves a lot of something I call stickiness, which is you're never gonna just catch the wrist. He's gonna be moving the blade like crazy and it's gonna be very aggressive. It's gonna be pulled back and forward repeatedly. So I'm not gonna control him here. What I'm gonna control is being able to stick to it and taking that distance and then maybe getting out and then maybe cutting him. So, okay. And again, disarming from there, hopefully. At range, meaning everything we're gonna look at, look at today is when he shows me he has a knife and I have a knife and we're at range, meaning we're not fighting close enough that we can touch each other with our hands. Okay, so right here, let's just say. So this here would be a medium to starting to get long range knife fight. The best stance, and I'll go over the reasons why, for this kind of thing, at range knife fighting, when you have time to deploy your knife and you know he has a knife, is a traditional lead grip open stance. It is this. This is protect your neck on this side, the blade out in front of you, not extended, but still able to protect your neck and move, and being able to have quick footwork, but most importantly, range. Meaning, the most effective weapon I have against another armed fighter is to accept any position that gives me more range on them. And then to move to their blind side, blind side, which is another range advantage, as effectively as possible. So from here, I can touch Eli. Eli has about five inches of range on me just naturally because of the length of his arms. So if I can touch him here, can you touch me? With my reverse? No. Okay? That's with your five, and look, I'm not only touching, up here I can touch you easily. I can kind of almost reach Maybe, you. Maybe, but not my abdomen. No, not your abdomen, it's very hard. And abdomen. you're leaning back. Yeah, I have so to like, lean. This, now, this gives me, now even just for me, if I want to touch him here, if I do this, look at the difference in my range. Just off, so I'm not moving forward anymore, maybe touch you. Here, if I really extend myself, I can yeah, push you back. Push it in. That's why fencers will always fight with the sword in their lead hand. Boom. Okay, so people will say the first criticism of this grip, this position, is what you said, right? Said, oh, well, what if someone grabs the knife? This is, Correct. you're presenting the knife, they can grab it. That's the fear that most people have. Yes. So it's actually, number one, almost impossible to disarm a moving blade. It just is. Now, out. if you come to, if the, and if you know how to knife, like the blade is moving. So you're, they're just trying to touch, touch my wrist. I can't. I'm just <laughs> gonna move, I'm not even gonna move, like in any way that's, I'm just Good. moving ba basic knife movements. I'm just gonna keep, Swinging, okay. He's gonna try and just touch it without getting cut. I can't. And I can't put my hand. You up. can't, right? There's no way. So there's no way you're touching this. And in fact, if you go to reach for it, you're actually getting yourself stabbed, okay? Against any trained knife fighter. Because I'm not scared of this. Yeah. I'm scared of that. When you extend that to me, that I have to react to. That I have to hope I can deal with. But if he starts extending this to try and grab my knife, that's the biggest gift in the world. So that's not a reality. And again, my first point of cutting, whenever someone's holding a blade, is the closest weapon to me. So what is the closest thing to me? Your hand. Because I'm holding it in reverse. Because you're holding it in your rear, yeah. yeah. Even if you put it there, it's still I'm still gonna try and cut your hand, but what can you do to me? You can cut me back. Yeah. So when I go to reach for you, you might cut me first. And then this becomes the real fight against two trained knife fighters. You look at two trained knife fighters, they fight in a way that's called non-committal fighting. So what am I trying to do? And this will deal further with why this ice pick grip is bad because it forces not, it forces it's committal committed. fighting. The only way I can reach you here is by stepping in to stab. And everyone on that Facebook page where, who was bashing me for saying this is the best grip, they're telling me I don't know what I'm talking about. They're like, actually, you know, this is the stab slash. You can stab slash or you can slash stab. I'm like, Number one, you technically have more angles, diagonals, horizontals, stabbing, right? You have vertical, and each one of those, either grip is always, when you're taught how to knife fight, 
accompanied by a slash stab. Number one, I could slash stab at, but I could also slash into a stab or I could stab into a slash. I actually have more options in terms of how to slash and stab you with this position than I do with this. Here I still have horizontal, I have vertical, I still have a little bit of diagonal, but I'm somewhat limited in my, in my response in terms of stabbing. This is not a strong stabbing position, you can kind of get it, but compared to this, yeah, it's fast, faster, way more powerful. Um, so again, I wanna, I wanna just go over every position. Number one, again, closed positions are not an ideal starting position unless something is putting you in that position. So if meaning we were in an alleyway and I pulled out a knife. Or, or yeah, and we're close already and you jam yeah. me up. Yeah. You jam up this arm. See, I'm naturally kind of in a closed position here. I'm too tight. I'm gonna try and fight here from like this kind of position. I'm gonna stab at me. I'm gonna have to use my blade here and then step out and be able to hopefully finish the fight. But I'm in an inherently closed position. I don't like this. This is not a strong knife fighting position. So the benefits, again, let's just go over the benefits even of an of a ice pick grip. Benefits of an ice pick grip. Very, very, very strong position for, for strong, strong steps, okay? Now you end fights with steps, but I'm somewhat limited in my stabbing options. Here, 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 right? And yes, I can do this. The other benefit of this is in close, Again, I think it's a stronger position for control of the knife. Yeah. Meaning if you come to attack me and I'm here, I still do have something protecting me a little bit. And I can use the blade here very, very comfortably to disarm, yeah. right? If it comes over top, like you're stabbing me over top, whatever it is, I can bring the blade here. I still have control with my blade and your blade. Like if you go for like a slash on top, no, no, no like a slash. No, 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 like a, like a downward oh. slash. See here, I have some degree of control if I want with the blade. Right? Yeah. To at least get a grip in the movement so I can drive it. Um, whereas here, if you come with a downward slash and I try and control with the blade, I don't have it as much. What I do have though is stabbing your hand and then changing the blade to this hand. <laughs> so there's benefits. So it's not to say that ice pick grip isn't good. I'll fight ice pick grip. Like if we start in close, I'll fight ice pick grip in rear leg because if he has it here and I have it here, I'm trying to open the line. Here, my range doesn't matter anymore. We're close enough that I can stab you with this hand and we're close enough that I can stab you with this. But if you take a step back and I take a step back, yeah. and, and now it was in this hand, I'm actually gonna do this. Yeah, you're gonna I'm actually gonna change my grip, always. I will not fight you here if you're over yeah. there. If you're like this and I'm like this, statistically speaking, you are gonna win the fight. You have more options. I have to. Look how I can't. To get to you, it's very hard. And if, if you just put it in a reverse grip in your rear hand, okay? Now, if you look, if I'm non-committal, yeah. tell me this doesn't make you want to step in and stab me hard, which is what's going to open up the disarm. If I just start doing this, yeah. right? I, I kind of want to... You not, feel, do you feel like you can get me from there? Mm -mm. If I'm doing this, no. bam! No, because I also don't oh. have enough mobility oh. with my knife in this. Yeah, all right. So I would want to then, and you're gonna to have to step into my range, and that's what I'm hoping for. I'm hoping for that kind of commitment. The thing my teacher always told me in Filipino martial arts is, you want to actually destroy the person slowly. You don't want to take your knife if it's knife versus knife. You want to have these death by a thousand cuts, right? You want it. The knife just is constantly cutting the wrist, the hand, everyone, right? You're just constantly chopping away at whatever you can in the closest thing, right? If it's your knee, whatever's close to me, I'm just cutting it. I'm never committing here. There's no chance for you here to disarm me. There's no chance for you here to really cut me back. No. If it's back there. Yeah. If it's, if it's in the lead, yes. I now we're even. Yeah. But if it's there, so what I'm doing is I'm forcing you to come in on me, and then, shit, we're all okay. then, I'm, <laughs> then I'm in a position to really get you. Yeah. And even if I was empty hand, and you just had it in your lead hand, traditional grip, traditional. and just cut my wrist up, okay? And don't commit to anything, yeah. just keep cutting up my wrist. I, there's no way I can do anything here. There is no defense to this, other than run, other than take the cut, protect yourself, and get out. There's no defense. 
Because if I, if you don't commit and you just keep swinging it like a maniac but not committing, there's no way I'm getting in without getting fucking destroyed. Yeah. Right? It's in the process of committing a hard slash. You see, now it's closed. Now you yeah. drive it. That's where you'll get in. Right? Or I do a hard stab and I step in and just yeah. so do a hard stab. Right. On a hard stab, see, at least here I'm close to him. But if you don't commit to that hard stab, yeah. you're just constantly moving it. What am I gonna do there? Nothing. Um, one of the other things people said is concealing the blade. They go, well, if it's here, it's, it's, it's like deception. Number one, in the video that the guy posted, he literally says if someone shows you the blade. Yeah. So that's a moot point. But even then, if someone is hiding the blade like this, it is far harder for me to pull out the blade in a stabbing fashion from here where I'm hiding it, this motion, than if I had it like this, and I just went like that. This is a, and it's a far deeper, more effective yeah. stab. So from here, I have to literally pull it out and hope I can turn. This is not a strong position for my wrist. This is, it's like as if you're throwing a hook versus turn your wrist up like this. This is a stronger position. Um, so it doesn't make sense. You can conceal a blade like this. You can conceal a blade like this. If someone's concealing a blade and they're trying to assassinate you by like, they don't know you and they just come like this, they're probably gonna do that from behind you anyway. That's true. So it doesn't matter. There's, There's no point in the front of the middle. No, and if you don't know that someone has a blade, they never told you they had a blade, you don't know them, they're just trying to kill you and rob you and take your money, and they're just casually walking by you and then they go like this, you're dead. It's like when people tell me, how do you escape a rear naked choke or an arm bar when it's fully in and the guy's breaking your arm or choking you unconscious, you don't. You stop it before it happens. So if the guy got this close with a knife, you're unarmed, you don't know he has a knife and he's hiding it to kill you, that's not an argument for how to hold a blade yeah. and why you would hold a blade that way. The argument for how to hold a blade is what gives me the biggest advantage against another knife fighter or even an unarmed person. Like I said, if you get rid of the knife, me just doing this, cutting you up. Yeah, I want to run away. When I do a thousand cuts over here and over here, no, I, I'm, look, unless my goal is really to kill you with the blade, like if I'm, if I'm coming to assassinate you again, I would do it with the sneaky way. So here, you know, but most of the time when people talk about knife fighting, they're talking about knife versus knife. Yeah. Or you have a knife and I'm unarmed. It's very rare that people are like, let me train to have a knife and kill someone unarmed. So, um, Quick question, when it's yeah. different types of knives, like people sometimes carry machetes in their car. Mm -hmm. um, you, most people won't carry like that type of like straight looking blade. Yeah. Machete is the most common thing. So The mentality is the same with a machete, and I have one right there, I can go around and grab it. Range is your best weapon. I will not fight with a machete in my rear hand. Right, and another thing by the way, if you put it in your rear hand, okay, just step off the wall a little bit. Uh, put your rear leg back. Okay, so now he has it in rear hand. I have it in lead hand. If you look, all I have to do is step to his blind side and it becomes very difficult for him to fight me. All I have to do is take a step diagonally out this way and, I'm not and you me. see how now you cannot even reach me at all because what you're doing is stepping to the blind side. Stepping to the blind side means stepping out where there is no weapon. So if, if I'm holding it in my rear, put it in your lead, yeah. just step diagonally that way. I don't have a counter option here unless I turn and by then I've been cut, I've had my throat slashed. When I'm in my lead, there is no stepping out to the blind side. I can't go this way, the blade is there. I can't go this way because the blade can reach me here. The blade can follow me when it's in the lead. And that is, by the way, the biggest advantage. Another thing people said is, this is harder to disarm than this. Bullshit. This, let me just show you, put it in reverse grip. If at any point the blade gets stuck under, and I'm on the flat part of the blade, okay, I am on the flat part of the blade here. This will not cut me. I've done this with live blades. By the way, if you're training with a knife, use a shock knife. It will teach you that you're actually getting stabbed and you'll feel it. It's an electrical blade. It zaps you. You really know you're getting cut. Um, but I've had to do this with my teachers with a real knife. You do not get cut. And by the way, in a knife fight, if all I take is, is cuts on my forearm, not anywhere where the sun don't shine, which is where my arteries are, I'll accept it. But from here, just feel the pressure 
Like, come and do it, yeah. stabby, right? So I'm here. If he, if he feels this pressure, the knife, I'm just using one hand, is going out, right? Yeah. Bam. Okay, now do it the other way. Hold it like this and come and stab me. No, no, do it, oh, do it, same angle, same, same angle, angle you just did, which was this. Oh, wait, yeah, oh, with this one? No, no, yeah, but do it like this, but just do like that. Oh, okay. Okay, here, I can't get the same control of the blade from there. Yeah. Right? This, I'm gonna have to move it this way to try and get the disarm and get control of it. Stab you with your own knife, right? Pull it out, hopefully yeah. I can get the disarm here and continue stabbing you. But this is inherently harder to deal with from that point of view. Um, and even again, any angle you go with that. With this one? If you come to stab me here. Again, you see here, because the blade has a, has a point that I can push against, this becomes an easier disarm. Whereas opposed to if you held it like this. So it's not, there are good disarms with both a traditional grip and a reverse grip. Neither one is necessarily better. You cannot grab a, a, a knife. You'll just get yeah. your hand sliced open. So this is, it's not like you could just reach and grab the blade here. Yeah. If you do that, I'm just gonna go like that and it'll slide out and slice your whole hand. Yeah. Um, so again, at range, traditional grip open. I'm not even gonna bother explaining why this is bad. This is bad because I'll explain. <laughs> <laughs> All he has to do, just extend your hand and block my arm, stuff it. I don't have options here. I'm stuffed. But you still want the knife in front of you just in case. Yeah, but I want it here. Try and stuff my arm here. Can't. Yeah. Right, if you try and do this, you're getting cut. Right? But if I'm here and you do stuff like I can't, I, it's against my own body. It's a trapping principle. Here I'm strong. Yeah. And by the way, the number, all this fancy stuff you see me doing with the blade, the truth is the best way to practice knife fighting, put it in your lead hand, treat it like a jab. So if this is, boom, you see how I'm not loading up, I'm not pulling it back, then hitting. Put up you your hand, to. right? And just, I'm gonna first indicate. Yeah. I'm gonna pull back, like I'm gonna go, I want you to move your hand out the way. Okay? You tell it Not bad, but move it sideways. Oh. Okay, so if I go with it, yes. If I'm just here, feel different? Yeah, it's very hard. I'm just relaxing into it. You're waiting for it, it's mm -hmm. not gonna. So the same thing is with a knife. You just kind of, it comes like a straight line. Boom. And it's a quick, boom. You can practice your jab. A guy with a good jab will be a good knife fighter. Non-committal strikes. Right? I could go from here and slash. I could do all this you fancy don't, stuff. You don't need to commit to do damage. You don't need to commit to anything, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you don't need to commit to com do no, anything. No, you've got a quick stab, bam, you're done. Quick stab. So I'm just gonna move around here, cut your hand, stab you. Now when you get close, I might do all the fancy stuff because you're already disarmed your knife if you had it. Yeah. And you see how my legs changed as I got close. I opened the line, now it's in my rear hand. Right, I went from here I step forward first like this, but then I want this space now, so I have distance to stab you. So as we get close, you start relying on that traditional diagonal footwork, where I might go up this way, I might go out if I'm cutting you this side this way. So it's a little more about like, uh, in close, you want to be with the rear. In hand. close, the rules change. Yeah. No, it okay. could be rear. Here, there's no advantage to either. They both have their own advantages. But again, I'm responding to that video of, somebody shows you a knife like this. It's like, it. yeah, you get it. <laughs> this is not, this shows you have a traditional striking background because you're thinking inherently, and that you watch old Steven Seagal movies, because you're thinking, this is my power. I'm extending my power, right? And yeah. it is, <laughs> but really it's your jab with the knife. It's this with the knife, it's range. And by the way, in boxing, the best boxers are ones that control range with their jab. Everyone always says the importance of a jab in boxing. It's your lead hand, lead uh, foot, extending out straight. Yeah. Peace.